I've recently been working with a client that used a surrogate to have their first child. There were some super interesting financial lessons that came out of that, so I wanted to unpack so that anyone going down this path knows what to look out for. Using a surrogate to have a child does not come cheap with the average cost coming in at around USD $100,000, so close to $150,000 Aussie dollars to make it happen. Now, having a kid is already a really big financial commitment and a big deal when you think about time out of the workforce, turning on a part-time capacity, childcare, not to mention the medical costs that come on top. So an additional 150 grand is a, a difficult thing for most people to do and something that's a real challenge if you're going down this path. Now, if you're having kids, you already know that it's not a financial decision because a better financial decision is to not have kids, but uh, you know, obviously we love them to death, so it's something that you wanna make happen. But if you're not smart with how you plan about doing this, it can set you way, way back financially. Now, when you're setting up to have children, the key, if you wanna put yourself in the best financial position possible post kids, is that you wanna try and invest as much as you possibly can before you have children so that you've got your investments that can just bubble away for you while the, you're working through this part-time capacity and dealing with what's gonna be your lowest income and highest expense period but you definitely don't want to invest more than you should because if you're forced to sell investments at the wrong time because you need the cash, you could be selling those investments at a loss and that could cost you serious money. So these clients that we were working with, when we started working together, they knew that having kids was on the cards. They knew that surrogate was the path that they were going to go down and they had a bit of time to prepare themselves financially mainly, but probably in a bunch of other areas as well to actually make that happen. They were on a decent household income, about 250K, and they were saving at a solid clip because they knew that they sort of were going to need to in order to make this happen. Now, when we started working together, we started exploring the possibilities and mapped out what their financial position based on their current savings, their current income, and the runway that we had until they were intending to incur these expenses around having a surrogate to figure out how much money they had left over. We could see that the surplus was pretty healthy and they were right on the cusp of being able to either fund their first property or to uh, buy a bunch of shares instead and have a decent share portfolio sitting there for them. In the short term, the difference between those two pathways was not that significant, but when we looked at it over time, buying a property was way better because they knew once they got into the property market, they had the property that would be bubbling away and working for them. They weren't sure exactly what their, they had an idea of their return to work plan, but they knew that they wanted to be able to have the flexibility to change that if they needed to. So they decided that they wanted to push a little bit harder so that they could get into the property market and buy their first home. Now, what actually ended up happening as we started rolling this out is that they uh, it took a little bit longer for them to, to find the surrogate and line up all the ducks that needed to happen in order to make that side of things work. So they had a little bit more savings runway. And at the same time, they ended up getting, both of them got a pay rise. One of them though got a more significant pay rise, which increased their savings capacity even further. They realized that they could have spent a little bit more and got a bigger property that would have been a bigger investment working for them, but they decided to stick to their original numbers so that they could create a bit more of a buffer, have a chunky emergency fund post having the, have, and also they had a few extra dollars left over to have some share investing happening on the side as well. Happy to report that these guys ended up having their kids all going well, apart from the sleepless nights and them being in the thick of it at the moment. But these guys put some runs on the board financially so that when they came out the other side or when they come out the other side, that they've got a solid pool of investments for them. It could have very easily gone the other way. And this is the thing that if you're thinking about going down that path, as I said, you wanna invest as much as possible, but not a dollar more than you should and not a dollar more than you need to, to be able to make the personal choices that you want and have the lifestyle that you want.